basically where you start and where you stop. Would you like to see how to make this integral up? It's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. I think you'll enjoy it. There's going to be a lot of picture drawing. That, well, to start off with a lot of picture drawing. You ready for it? Sure. I'm going to go back to this because I really don't want to draw that anymore. Are you guys alright with that? I don't want to draw that. Uh, it's kind of annoying. So let's just say that from this picture, I'm going to go back, and you already know the idea. I'm going to be cutting a whole bunch of slabs out. You know, maybe I will redraw it. Darn it. Yeah, I'll redraw it because I have to talk about, I talk about other things. Plus, I'm going to reverse it because it's easier to draw the top of it as, at an angle. So let's say that I do same idea, but I do this one. And I'm going to try to give you every step along the way. So my first goal, I'm going to cut into slabs. Okay, slabs. Okay, there's one. Now I'm going to cut another one. There's two. I'm going to cut another one. You see my slabs? Yes, no? I'm going to cut all of these, so dot, 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 all the way down my figure. I'm going to cut this into a whole bunch of slabs, and I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to cut the slabs so that they're the same width. This is going to make it easier to add together. Just like we did with the area problem. Hopefully you're seeing the similarities between this and the area problem. So I'm going to cut into slabs the same width. How did I represent the width? of my areas, and how am I going to represent the width of my slabs? Yeah. Do you remember that we used delta x to represent the width of that, that little sub-interval? So I'm going to cut this into slabs, delta x, y. So all these little, little intervals, all those little cuts, those slabs are all delta x y. You still so far so good? Yes, no? Okay. Now, would you mind if I took one of those slabs and just kind of blew it up? Not like, but like made it bigger? I'm guessing some of you are wishing we could just blow it up, huh? Yes. No more math. Ha ha ha. Too bad for you. This is two dimensional. You cannot blow it up. Maybe you could. Unless you want to. Anyway, I'm going to take one of these guys, one of these slabs. And make it quite a bit larger. Oh, ran out of space. Let me redraw. Do you see it? What I'm trying to get across to you? Oh, this is going to be difficult. Not too bad. So I've taken one of these slabs right here and I've made it just bigger so you can see a better picture. Now, can you remember what we did on the area problem? I cut each one into intervals. What did I do within each interval? Someone tell me, what did I do? It wasn't necessarily in half, but you're on the right track. Arbitrary point. Arbitrary point. Arbitrary point. Great. You guys both had the same time. So I'm going to pick some random point. I could put it in the middle. It's going to look like it's in the middle, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in the middle. Explain to me why the arbitrary point doesn't have to be in any particular point. Because you're taking the limit. It's going to do that. Yeah. So wherever it is, it's going to be within there, right? 
but it's going to be so darn close to everything else that it's not going to matter where it is. So I'm going to pick an arbitrary point. What did I use for arbitrary point? Do you remember? X, K dot or C sub K, one or the other. I'm going to use xk dot because that's what I grew up with. So arbitrary point xk dot or c sub k doesn't really matter um, on the interval. Okay, okay. So that means that down here I'm going to go all right. On my width, this is my sub-interval, that's delta x. This width is delta x, do you guys understand that? That's delta x. On this, well, let's see, delta x, all the way at the bottom, delta x. On this little sub-interval, I am going to pick some arbitrary point. Now, Sarah said the middle, I'm going to put it in the middle, it doesn't have to be there. Just so we can see it easier, I'm going to pick some random arbitrary point, x, k dot. Now think back to the area. On the area problem, when I found my xk dot, what did I do with that xk dot? Remember the area problem? You had the width, right? The width was very easy. What were you missing? What did I do with the xk dot? And that gave me my height. Now what I'm looking for here, please, please watch this, I hope you're, you're seeing the, the parallels here. What I'm looking for here is not the width. The width is going to be easy. The width is going to be from A to B because it's, it's bound. It's bound by planes like this. It's going to be from A to B. This is not what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is this part. This part is my cross-sectional area. So what I'm doing here, the width is easy. The width, the width is delta x. In general, it's going to be from a to b. That's the easy part. In an integral, that's very easy. a to b, no problem. What I'm caring about is how in the world do I find the cross-sectional area? Because when you think about it, this is not a rectangular prism. prism. This is going up at an angle, right? So what I need to do is find some place to get the cross-sectional area. The place I choose to find my cross-sectional area is it this far right, right one or this far left one necessarily? It's some arbitrary point, xk dot. We just talked about how xk dot really doesn't matter because I'm going to smash them together. So xk dot simply allows me to find my cross-sectional area of each sub-interval. Say that one more time so you can get it. Arbitrary point. What we're doing with the arbitrary point is finding the cross-sectional area right there. That's the way that we're going to find the well, the cross-sectional area, the surface area, that way I can multiply it by its width. Again, the arbitrary point doesn't matter because when I take a limit of it, it's all going to smash together anyway. So this point says, hey, find cross-sectional area at xk dot. So pick an arbitrary point, arbitrary point xk dot on each subinterval and find cross-sectional area at that point. That means to me that I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do this. My purple line, my purple line that goes around that, that's my cut at xk dot. Do you see that what that's going to create is just some surface area for me? Yeah, you know? So we're going to find the cross-sectional surface, that's cross-section, cross-sectional surface area at that point. Again, it doesn't matter where it is since delta x is going to become really small. It doesn't matter. So let's see. Well, we're about ready. We're about ready. Can I work over here so I don't get all bound up? You don't want to get bound up in calculus. Calculus constipation, then you're bound to get a brain fart. 
Get it? <laughs> that was pretty funny. Come on, brain fart. Lose it on. The... I just made that up. That deserved more than your courtesy. That was good. Just think about that later. Watch the video again. It'll be on. I'll leave it on there for you so you can enjoy that over your two-day break. What's uh, V sub K? Arbitrary point. Nope. That's X K dot. What's V sub K? What's V? Volume. Volume sub K means of whatever little interval I'm talking about. You get it? So this is every little interval. So the volume at the first interval or second interval is going to be equal to, well, the area at X K dot. Times what do you think? Times what? What am I doing up here? How do you find volume again? What, how do you find volume? What are you, what are you doing for volume? We're, we're beyond that. Yes, it's length times width times height for a rectangular prism. We do not have one of those here. Surface area times width or length. Yes, that's what we're doing. So the surface area is the area at x k dot. Do you get it? That's what I'm trying to represent here. The area at x k dot, the surface area, times the width. How long is the width? Very good. Delta x. This is cross sectional area. Times length. Just like we thought of it. Cross section area times length. Now, how many intervals does this stand for? One arbitrary interval. Very good. So the, this is just one interval. How do I find all of them? So basically, I'm just talking about one slab right now. How do I say I want to do all the slabs? A sum. Let's add them all together. So if we say, OK, this is one slab. Then this, if I drop the k, I say, oh, if I want more than one slab, I'm going to have to add them all up. Starting at the first one and going through the nth one. That should look familiar. It's just like area right now. Only inside of it says, oh, find the area at x k dot times delta x. Hey, that's just for each one. What this says is, Take every slab that you have, every slab, find a random point for each slab, find the area of the cross section at each random point, multiply each one of them times its width, and add them all up. That should give you an approximation for the volume. Approximate volume. Okay, now. Use your calculus. How do you make it better? Very good. Did you hear him over there? He said take the limit as n approaches infinity. That's going to say instead of a finite number of slabs, which would be a pretty good approximation, make it an infinite number of slabs. If you pack an infinite number of things into a finite space, it moves it really close to zero. It doesn't become zero because you have to have some sort of length, don't you? If delta x were zero, you get a volume of zero. That wouldn't make any sense. You have to have something there. But it's so small that it's 